Those who break the law are punished even if they are otherwise good, while those who conform to the law are not punished even if they are worthless. This is how the public way is kept open while the private way is stopped. Those who govern do not value self-righteousness. They value the impossibility of doing wrong. Therefore, it is said, rather than forbid ambition, let there be nothing to desire. Rather than forbid contention, let there be nothing to usurp. In this way, people's talents are discerned and fairness is put into practice. Those with more than enough stop at good measure, while those with less than enough find employment. Thus, the land can be unified. When benevolence is overextended, it becomes weakness, and if you are weak, you lack dignity. When sternness is overextended, it becomes ferocity, and if you are fierce, you lack gentility. When liking is overextended, it becomes indulgence, and if you are indulgent, you lack authority. When punishment is overextended, it becomes indulgence, and if you are indulgent, it becomes cruelty. And if you are cruel, you have no friends. Seeing the yielding and soft being invaded, those who do not know the way strive to be hard and strong. Seeing the hard and strong perish, they strive to be yielding and soft. Such are those who lack the basis to rule within, while their seeing and hearing run out within confusion. Therefore, they have no stable course in all their lives. To survive peril and quell disorder cannot be done without wisdom. Were it a matter of following precedents, even fools have more than enough. Therefore, enlightened leaders do not enforce useless laws or listen to ineffectual words. Birth and maturation must have the vital energy of harmony. That is why the way of sages is broad yet exacting, strict yet warm, gentle but direct, powerful but human. What is too hard snaps, and what is too soft folds. Sages are between hardness and softness, thus finding the root of the way. There are three dangers in the world. To have many privileges but few virtues is the first danger. To be high in rank but low on ability is the second danger. To receive a large salary without personally accomplishing much is the third danger. So people may gain by loss and may lose again. Something desired for its advantage may turn out to be harmful, while something intended to hurt others may on the contrary help them. It is imperative to examine the reversal of benefit and injury, the door of calamity and fortune. The way of stages is like setting up a keg of wine at a crossroads. Passers-by ladle out more or less according to their individual needs. Therefore, the way to win one person is to win a hundred people. If people deal with those below them in the same terms as what they wish from those above them, who would not be grateful? If people worked for those above them on the same terms as what they want from those below them, who would not be glad? An ancient sage king warned, Be careful of each day that goes by with the greatest possible caution. No one stumbles over a mountain, but people do trip over anthills. So, the fact that people generally slight small problems and subtle matters is the very reason they have so many regrets. To worry about trouble after it happens is like a sick man seeking good treatment only when his condition has become critical. Whenever people initiate undertakings, they invariably begin by using their knowledge to consider and assess. Only then do they dare to define their strategy. It may turn out profitably, or it may turn out harmfully. This is the difference between the foolish and the wise. Clearly, it is natural to consider wisdom the key factor in the question of survival or destruction, the door of calamity and fortune. 
Countless are those who have risen up and tried to use it, then fallen and drowned in difficulties. If you knew how to do what is right, undertakings could be carried out. This is a road on which all the world could arrive. So, wisdom and reflection are the gate and door of calamity and fortune. Action and rest are the hinges of profit and loss. The evolution of affairs and the government of nations are completed only after waiting. Those who do not drown in difficulties succeed, so it is imperative to be careful. The way of rulers is to live quietly to cultivate themselves, and to live frugally to lead those below. If rulers live quietly, those below will not be restless. If rulers live frugally, the citizens will not resent them. Let individuals suit their natures, be secure in their abodes, live as best they can, and exercise their capabilities. In this way, even the ignorant will be found to have strong points, and even the intelligent will be found to have weaknesses. The perceptions of eye and ear are not sufficient to distinguish the inner designs of these things. Intellectual discourse is not sufficient to determine right and wrong. Those who use their wits to govern have a hard time maintaining a nation. Only those who realize universal harmony and keep to spontaneous response can do it.